Now, this question is really about, uh, let me see, oh, marijuana usage, right? Now, I get this question a lot. And through the years, my answer to this question has changed. Um, so let's talk about it in terms of what does the data show? It says, hey, doc, I'm 36 year old, years old, and I just wanted to know, are there any studies that correlate marijuana use to stronger erections? Now, my personal experience when I partake is that my, me having an erection like I'm 18 again, plus the erection lasts very long, even after I ejaculate, so I'm able to go extra rounds without stopping. Just curious to say, what the studies have to say. Now, this gentleman is in a perfect situation because he is in his prime, you know, 36, shouldn't really be having any issues. Now, what we don't know is how this is going to play out long-term. So say you're 36, maybe you've been smoking for 15 years, smoking weed since you're for 15 years. We don't know how chronic weed use compares to ca casual weed use, because honestly, studies really don't look at, and this is my, my qualm with the studies, they're really not looking at dosage, duration, the method that they're using to consume the marijuana, um, or anything, or even like the strain, um, whether it's uh, sativa or indica even. So with that being said, let's talk about what we do know. Now, you, this is a great question because you're not alone, you know? When I ask or talk to people about marijuana usage, it tends to be across the board that people will say, yeah, you know, it makes me feel hornier, it makes me feel a lot more like having sex, I'm having great erections, I'm getting moist, whether it's the ladies or men. And um, a, a study was actually published that showed that when men were asked to report about marijuana use, about 51% of guys said that they had increased arousal with weed use and about a 73% increase in sexual pleasure. So that's, that, that, that's great, right? Um, and you can't ignore the ladies when they study ladies and ask them about THC or marijuana or cannabis, whatever you want to use, call it use. Um, female sexual function went up. You know, they increased... They said they increased in both orgasm and sex drive when they consumed marijuana before sex. Now, like I said, doesn't say whether they were smoking it, whether they were eating it, whether they were vaping it. But I'll say this, I honestly believe that if you are a blunt smoker, you're getting that tobacco. And so we cannot separate out the tobacco from the marijuana, right? Because tobacco, we know will impair blood flow long-term. We know that it will damage the endothelium or the lining of the blood vessels, which are important for blood flow. So it's like, okay, well, you, uh, we'll go through and talk about these studies on marijuana use, but they're not specifying what type of marijuana use this is, right? And a recently published uh, systematic review and it was a systematic review and a meta-analysis, meta which basically looks at studies and finds studies that have been done that have been done really well. And they, they put all the data in together and then they look at it and they pull the data out. And so recently um, one was published that conducted a, in, in a, a, a look at cannabis use and erectile dysfunction because they wanted to see specifically, okay, we can talk about testosterone, we can talk about all these things, but what was it doing in terms of erectile dysfunction? And so what they did is they looked at five case controlled studies with data um, of 3,395 healthy men. About a thousand of them used weed, you know, they used marijuana, and about 2,300 of them were non-users. They were all healthy guys, um, and I want you to keep in mind that they looked at users of marijuana and not smokers. You know, they were just like, do you use it? Have you used it? Um, but they didn't specify what kind. And the overall prevalence of erectile dysfunction in marijuana users was actually 69%. And ED in the non-users was about 35%. So data from this study really started to suggest 
that erectile dysfunction was twice as high in marijuana users compared to non-users. But, um, you know, let's talk about the but here. But I'll also say that they hypothesized that the reason erectile dysfunction in marijuana users was, was um, elevated was either through two different pathways. One was using the cannabinoid receptors in the brain. They thought that there was something going on there. But another one is because there's cannabinoid receptors in the erectile tissue or the corpus cavernosum. So they hypothesized that it was one of those two pathways which was causing ED in marijuana users. So this was really the prevailing thought um, is that potentially marijuana was causing ED um, long-term in guys or that it was associated with it, right? Um, but in two, 2021, a Canadian center published a historical cohort study from patients that they'd actually seen within their clinic. Now they looked at patients that had been coming in from 2008 to 2017. And what they did is they took almost 8,000 men, 7,809 to be exact, were included in the study. Now out of those, almost a thousand of them used marijuana in some way, shape or form, and about 7,000 weren't using at all. So 993 were users of marijuana and 6,817 didn't use it. So I like to round up, right? You know, I'm always a glass half full instead of empty type. So when they compared the gents who were in these two different categories as weed users versus non-weed users, um, what they found is that the, the weed users actually had a higher sex drive. They actually had an, a, a higher average total testosterone levels. And those guys who used marijuana actually seemed to feel as though they were aging better than the non-users, right? Maybe they were just mellowed out a little more. Um, <clears throat> and get this, cannabis users were also saying that they were having more sex than the non-users. Now, this same study actually found um, something, uh, something else out, testosterone levels. They found that within their cohort, now this is in Canada, you know, they actually do a great way of breaking down what nationality they were and what, what race they were and all of that. And, you know, and factoring in alcohol drinking and, you know, a whole bunch of things and lifestyle. Um, what they also found is that the testosterone levels were higher in the cannabis users than the non-users. So popular thought has been, um, it had been for years that people just assumed that if you used marijuana, you were gonna lower your testosterone levels. But this study actually found the opposite. And actually there was a study even before that, which was a large cohort study that looked at testosterone levels with cannabis use um, in over 1,200 men. And they too found that testosterone levels actually seemed higher and went up in marijuana users compared to the non-users. So um, this Canadian study that found that it seems as though marijuana might be useful when it comes to men and sex drive and, and, um, and, and erectile function is actually much larger than the previous study that seemed to say the exact opposite. So because of the size of the study and because of the fact that it seems very carefully conducted and because it seems as though clinically guys, men that use marijuana recreationally really do tend to have better sex, and, you know, more sex and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to lean towards believing this second study that came out that says that it actually has a positive impact. But I want to preface this by saying that I do not think that guys who are smoking blunts fall into this category because the, 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 the tobacco, the nicotine that you crumble in with the weed actually can negatively impact blood flow. So I do not believe that blunt smokers are having this type of improvement. I also think that we got to study it a little closer to see what does this say about the dose? What form of marijuana consumption is, 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 this, is this positivity associated with versus potentially having some negative impacts. Um, 
So I think all of that is definitely something to keep in mind. So I'm not saying go out tomorrow and smoke weed and I think it's going to repair erectile function and give you massive erections. But what I can say is that based off of the data that we're looking at, the gentlemen who, who casually use marijuana have seem to have a lifestyle which reflects having a more positive experience with erectile function than guys who maybe don't. Okay. So I hope that helps. Now, one thing I want to be very clear about is that when it comes to sperm function and fertility and your sperm moving around like they should and, and being viable and virile and able to fertilize an egg. Now I will say that there's plenty of data to suggest that cannabis or marijuana use will impair your ability to get somebody pregnant. Um, and that is pretty much across the board. We, most studies seem to show that there's a little bit of damage to the sperm quality. But if you are comfortable shooting blanks, then you don't have to worry about it. You can keep, keep using marijuana <laughs> in the way that you have. But if you are, are in the family planning stages of life where you actually want to get your partner pregnant, or um, someone else pregnant, then you do need to consider that long-term use of, of marijuana can impair sperm ability. So future studies need to really look at marijuana use uh, by type, strain, dose, frequencies, and the different ways that people are consuming it. Are they smoking it? Are they eating it? Are they vaping it? Are they chewing it? Are they rubbing it on their body, um, you know, because that can give us more data and more information as to whether or not this is something that you should be um, engaged with. All right. And, 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 you know, we want to know, is this dose dependent? You know, like, is it the more you smoke? Is it the less you smoke? Is it, you know, like we, we need more data. Um, so if it's working for you, I would say, don't be alarmed. But if you're doing it and it's not working for you, that'd be one of the first things that I'll tell you to stop. Um, like, like, for example, take a patient of mine, a chronic weed smoker came in, was having some erectile function issues, but he was also vegan. So that was part of the problem. Um, and there were some other things going on. His testosterone levels were low because he was vegan. Um, and, and, you know, his body just wasn't making the testosterone the way that it used to. But I'll also say that one of the things that I had him do was stop smoking weed. So, um, sometimes in my practice, I have advised someone to stop smoking weed, but like I said, if it's working for you, um, then I don't see any real, real reason to be concerned. But I'll also say this, the body loves, um, loves variety. So if you've been smoking chronically, stop for a little while, then, then consider going back to it. You know, nothing, nothing like that. Should you just be doing all day, every day for the rest of your life, right? Everything should be done with a little bit of moderation in mind. I mean, um, so that's my spiel on marijuana and I hope that helps.